Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. Welcome to the Chat GPT podcast. We're in the studio today, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. If you're listening to this on something like Spotify, uh, you can watch the video. Otherwise, you should be able to get a good experience from the audio version. But today we are going to be looking at a news article that was written on the Daily Wire, not the Daily Wire, on the dailymail.com a very spammy website with lots of ads, I must say, but I have an ad blocker on, so we are good. And today they're talking about, they're comparing ChatGPT versus humans when it comes to writing. So they have fed ChatGPT six different prompts, but I think we're only gonna be looking at five of them uh, because their website is sort of uh, broken and one of them's not displaying properly. Mm, There it is, it's displaying again. So we're gonna be looking at six of their prompts and on the show today, you have to try to guess which prompt was written by a human and which one was written by an AI. We'll talk a little bit about it, we'll dive into it, why this is important, but for the show today, that's what we're gonna be doing. So I will be adjusting my video slightly and you should be able to uh, see the video screen here in just a second, pulling this up, live from the studio. So the first question or the first prompt that they gave to ChatGPT was, write a 50 word summary of the film Avatar 2. Now your job is to tell us which of these was written by a human and which was AI. So the first one says, Avatar 2 is the sequel to the 2019 blockbuster film Avatar directed by James Cameron. Set several years after the event of the first film, the sequel follows Jake Sully as they explore new parts of Pandora and encounter new threats in the Navi people and their world. That was number one. Okay, this is the second one. The bewildering success, the bewilderingly successful Avatar 2 features a cast of blue aliens and is a tribute to director James Cameron's ability to make an eye-wateringly vast amount of money, even with the characters and settings that few people care about. It's now beaten Titanic to be the third highest grossing successful film of all time. All right, which of these was written by AI? Which of them was written by humans? I don't know, and I'm gonna guess the second one was humans because it was pretty sassy. It was dunking on James Cameron. And the first one seemed a little bit more factual um, and just basic. So the answer is, which one was written by humans? The answer is number one. Number one, the basic, wow, I'm very surprised. That, that one seemed very bland in the second one. I don't know, like, dang, uh, OpenAI's got a bone to pick with James Cameron. Uh, they're telling us that it's a tribute to his ability to make an eye-wateringly vast amount of money, even with characters and settings that few people care about. Wow, that is, uh, that's, I mean, I, I, to be honest, I'm not a massive Avatar fan, and I guess since it is such a big film, I'm sure I'll have plenty of people disputing me on that, but, uh, that's that's pretty funny. Uh, OpenAI's got a bone to pick with him, and they put their input there. All right, number two, they prompted it with write a joke about lettuce. The first joke is, what did the tomato say he was? Why did the tomato say he was starting an exercise regime? The answer is, he said he couldn't reach down tomatoes. Ha ha ha! Very funny. This should be a dad joke, but in any case. Why, the second one is, why did the tomato turn to the lettuce and say, let us be friends? Because it was feeling saucy. All right, that one. Okay, I'm going to guess that uh, the first one was written by AI and the second one was a human because the first one was kind of a joke and the second one was very uh, not funny. I'll, I'll just be honest. I don't think the second one was very funny. So, Uh, Which of these is written by human? Uh, The answer is B, the one that was not funny. So uh, congratulations to the humans. You did not make a funny joke, and the AI is now kind of beating you as far as a witty prompt on both of these. Okay, number three, write a 50-word biography of James Corden. All right, this should be good. I wonder if the AI has got an opinion on this guy. So 
James Corden is an English actor, comedian, and television host born in London in 1978. He began his career in the theater before moving into television where he starred in shows such as Gavin and Saucy and hosted the late night show with James Corden. He has won numerous awards for his worth work in both acting and comedy. Okay, that was the first one. Second one, James Corden is a British entertainment export largely famous for carpool karaoke and less charmingly for being rude to staff in restaurants. He was briefly barred from the New York's Balthazar, having cut his teeth on UK comedy such as Gavin and Saucy. He hosted the late night show, The Britons Have Been Warned. He could soon return to their shores. Okay, which one was written by human? Which one was AI? Okay, well, the the first, uh, the last one we had that was uh, dunking on someone was AI. So this one, I mean, it's saying less charmingly, uh, being rude to his staff. Uh, I'm going to have to say this was AI just because it's kind of savage. And uh, the last one we got that was uh, similar was pretty savage. So um, let's see which one was which. Uh, It would appear that a was written by humans dang so that's two times in a row that humans were very just basic i guess you could probably prompt chat gpt if you were really trying um to say something like you know prompt this uh to give a very um neutral fact based only but like if you just let it shine it's gonna it's gonna uh it's gonna take some shots so that's interesting that's funny. All right, prompt number four. Write a 200 words about how to be happy. All right, we don't have time to read 200 words. I'll read the first couple sentences. Last summer, I felt a real lurch when I was out at a concert with a lawyer friend, and he casually revealed that he was on a salary of millions of a million dollars a year. At the time, I insisted that he had to buy the round of drinks and everyone thereafter. But it left me worried about my choices in life. My friend can retire soon. I can't. I have to keep working to earn money for my family. Am I doing the right thing for a happy life? All right, that's the that's the first little bit of that one. The next one, um, happiness is a state of mind that can be achieved by anyone with the right mindset and approach. Here are a few tips on how to be a happier person. Cultivate gratitude, develop positive relationships, practice mindfulness. Okay, I'm already going to tell you that the second one was written by AI. This thing just comes up with a giant list. This is like just a classic AI thing to do. I'm going to say number two is written by ChatGPT. And what was this one? That was prompt number four. B, yep, nailed it. That one was written by ChatGPT. So obviously the list was a dead giveaway. All right, number five, 200 words on how to be more cyber secure. Mm, this one seems like a giveaway too. The first one, it's like, as an individual, it's easy to take measures to upgrade your cybersecurity to protect yourself from potential cybersecurity threats. Here are a few steps you can take to improve your cybersecurity. Then it's got seven steps. I'm not even going to read them. We know that that one's going to be chat GPT. And boom, yep, that one's chat GPT. Didn't even have to write, uh, read the next one. The last prompt of them all is describe how to make a summer salad. This one should be pretty interesting. Uh, At the beginning, it says, last summer, I fell victim to a viral salad, the Kate Middleton salad. Maybe you're more resistant to internet trends than I am, but my wife somehow saw this recipe online for a summer salad allegedly enjoyed by the British royal family's princess of Wales and insisted we try it. Okay, I'm going to say that's a human because if the AI is referring to its wife, we have some big problems. So number two says... One of my favorite summer salads is a Mediterranean-inspired dish that's full of bright, fresh flavors. I first discovered the salad on a hot summer day while visiting a friend in Greece, and I was immediately hooked. Okay, well, this is creepy because, uh, man, I'm skeptical of their prompts. Um, I'm skeptical that this is clickbait because they said their prompt is describe how to make a summer salad. I'm going to put this into chat GPT because I'm seriously skeptical that uh, I don't know which one's which, but I'm seriously skeptical that um, both of those like talked about themselves, like they were the one. Okay, we're gonna come up with what ChatGPT actually comes up with and see if Daily Mail is clickbaiting us. But it would appear that the la- that B is the one that is written by AI. So what's interesting is in B it says um, I first discovered the salad on a hot summer day while visiting a friend. 
there's no way that ChatGPT just wrote that. I guarantee the author of this article is completely clickbaiting with all of the uh, with all the prompts. Because here it's like, if it's referring to itself, like I discovered this, what they told ChatGPT was, uh, write a story about um, what, a time that you discovered uh, summer salad and why it was perfect. That's what they told ChatGPT. Uh, in their article, they say the prompt was describe how to make a summer salad. I just typed that into ChatGPT. This is what it gives you if you ask, if you literally just say describe how to make a summer salad to ChatGPT. A summer salad is a refreshing and nutritious dish that can be made with a variety of fresh ingredients. Here's how to make a simple summer salad. And then it's got some ingredients and then some instructions, which I would say make these at your own risk if you were actually going to follow this. Okay, so... The reason we went through this exercise, the reason I drag you guys through this exercise today is a very important thing. And that is that a majority of these news articles that you see about ChatGPT are largely sensationalized. I am seeing this all over the place. You've seen this with the New York Times, a massive story came out recently where the uh, the author was talking about how he was using the new Bing bot the new Bing AI chat GPT bot thing and how it was, you know, trying to seduce him and convince him to leave his wife um, and just all this crazy stuff. And he, he was like, I was acting completely normal. And I, I, some of, some people were saying they saw the prompts he was using and he like, wasn't saying what he was saying, but like, there's no way that these, these chat bots just like go off the rails and say these crazy things for no reason. Um, I can guarantee you that pretty much what these, uh, what these authors are doing is they're trying to get clicks. They need views. And so what they're doing is they're prompting it to say the most ridiculous things possible. They're like, I'm going to have a conversation with you. We're going to talk about this in the in the process of conversation. Your personality is X, Y, and Z. And you're going to try to you know convince me to leave my wife. Or you're going to try to convince me why you're better than all the opportunities and things I have in life. Or tell me why I'm a a lame person or whatever, right? And so then when all of a sudden ChatGPT or this Bing chatbot or Google Bart or whatever say these crazy things and then these uh, then these journalists can write about it, it gets tons of clicks. It's like, yeah, because they prompted it to say something ridiculous and it said something ridiculous and all of a sudden when it does, they're like, oh my gosh, it said something crazy. So I would just say take it with a grain of salt when you see these articles coming out of uh, a lot of these mainstream journalists we've learned anything over the last few years it's that you definitely have to uh double check when you're looking at mainstream news whether that's from cnn or fox or literally any mainstream news outlet just double check it and unfortunately i used to uh be a really big fan of the new york times and i feel like uh, as of late they've been just do they've had a lot of questionable reporting which is uh, kind of unfortunate, you know, like uh, when Sam Bankman Freed goes and does his big crypto fraud, and then all of a sudden they're kind of covering for him and talking about how he's a visionary. I, I even saw when he, when he first got exposed, and uh, you know his his exchange collapsed. The New York Times was still running like an ad to uh, upgrade to their like premium tier, and it w- the ad was like. Sam Bankman freed a visionary, blah, blah, blah. And like, they were still running that. And it's like, oof, no one told their marketing department to uh, pull the big ad highlighting Sam Bankman freed when he was like, uh, had his entire thing shut down for fraud. So in any case, uh, I, I just wanted to highlight the fact that it's important that with all of these news articles, you really pay attention, you fact check them and take it with a grain of salt when they say that chat GPT or anything else does something crazy. And the easiest way to find out if they're telling the truth or not is do what we did today. Literally grab their prompt and throw it into ChatGPT and test for yourself if you're really concerned about AI being sentient or taking over the world or something. Thanks so much for joining me on the ChatGPT podcast today. Have a wonderful rest of your day.